Welcome to the hottest on the planet, Firewood Station. Alright, thank you. When was your sound established? Well, it established playing fully out there with, I would say, other sounds and being, having the opportunity to be playing to the wider public. Mm -hmm. Before, we used to, I used to play um, like the youth, in a youth club. Yeah. And um, just for friends, really. You know, like, we used to play selection in the house on Friday evening, what we bought and things like that. Yeah. You know, every, every weekend we used to meet and do these things. Very good meeting. And then one time now I went to a dance and I noticed what they're playing, I got the same sort of tunes in my yard and things like that. And I loved it, you know, the vibes of it. Then I said, well, they love that and I got the same tunes and we had connections to get music as well. Mm. So I decided well, it's, it would develop the song more, mm. you know. So by that time now it's coming to like 75, yeah. to 1975. So from then that's when we started, you know, really playing out and like, serious, you know, Okay. Really. Can you tell me about the Root Ambassador's journey? Root Ambassador's journey? Well, as I say, it started 75 yeah. in East London, mm. you know, place called Forest Gate. Yeah. You know, I'm used to play around the East London area, taking it like East Ham, coming up to Leighton, and yeah. Hackney, you know, that was sort of our area, you know, mm. and um, yeah, playing with other huge sounds at the time, you know, but uh, yeah, we just go and do what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> we're still here now, you know, <laughs> in 2022, <laughs> so we do tanks, you know, and the, yeah. the journey is, is a long, winding road, but always straight, on the road straight, you know. Yeah. Uh, from our coming to this, it was through the vibes of our consciousness, black consciousness, mm. and, um, you know, the elders at that time, things were coming to a... Uh, uh, ahead in the sense of um, things like the Malcolm X event, Luther King, yeah. you know, and Muhammad Ali and all these things, black, you know, strong people, yeah. you know, and the whole injustices that we were seeing with Biko and Mandela, yeah. you know, so I'm plus our own personal experiences mm -hmm. of what I call, you know, the oppression of the black race. Worldwide, yeah. you understand. So our own in, um, experiences in London here, yeah, coming up as youths in the seventies, and battling with police, you know, getting framed for things you never do, yeah. never considered doing, yeah, yeah um, getting ostracized by your parents, yeah. all these kind of things. You know? Basking it. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, and you know, da daily wars with with the skinheads because yeah. we was in East London and it's a, a West Ham area mm. and this other, what well, they name Millwall, yeah. you know, these, yeah, you know, some headless man, because <laughs> they don't have no head, you know, yeah. <laughs> see, is that the guy said they're headless, you know, because they are thinking correct, mm. you understand, so that's why it's a war, because we grew up in that way, so, this make we have a militancy, you know? Mm. Yes. All the way around. So we carry we look for that within our life and you know, the music and brethren. Yeah. So we are brethren of our like thinking and experiences. You know, so that getting hard snow and it all get channeled into the sound system vibe. Mm. You know, yeah, I just the captain of the board, but there's a team. Yeah. You understand behind. Yeah. To get yeah. the year, but who is just a captain, yeah. you know? But I give thanks for that, and some strong brethren around, 
<laughs> yeah, with me over the years. Yeah. That keep the thing going as well, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah, like, uh, yeah. One man can have a box. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, unless it's a treble box. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Generally, one man could not lift a box. So you yeah. need a team. Yeah. Why did you choose to play Roots Reggae? Well, because again, it was portraying and relaying the message that we was feeling. At the time. Yes, okay. and being on the, you know, the conscious side of things. Mm. That music is what stimulates the mind. So we also decided to well, pre present that, you yeah. know, to the people and, yeah. you know, and give it to them. And then from that time till now, that is the strongest force within the music yeah. genre and that, you know. Because anytime you go, like what they call revive, it's not revive for I for I because we're always playing that. Mm. <laughs> we're on it permanent from then till now. Yeah. So because something like 1970 or something like 2000, yeah. the all to me is current. Definitely. You know, there's not no revive. And that's one from 70 never dead yet. Because it's still there, so you can play it now. Yeah. Likewise, the 2001. You know. Mm. So yeah, these are the vibes. It's <laughs> not <laughs> Rastafari. Yeah. Please share Jayut's top five producers. Wow, top five producers. Well, there's a number. Top five. Well, there are many, and I won't say them. It's a lot of them I know are in some bridges, so I would say, yeah, start to, you know. One at the top is like uh, Augustus Pablo. Mm. Because, yeah, yeah, the dub organizer, first one. How <laughs> does the dub organizer? Yeah, Kid Tubbies was the dub mixer. Yeah. And he, you know, Pablo organized the dub man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and then Lee Perry's, you know, he produced a lot of good roots artists, you know, like Cedric Knight and then the Congos, you know, Max Rowe. You know, Jazz boys, yeah, do a lot of work with New Bridge to all all of my car you know, he's an artist man, and he also work with Pablo also. And then you add like John Joe Lance as well, yeah. yeah. One like Jack Rubies, because of, you know, enhancing talent and presenting it, and because him, Present my favorite artist as such in, in within the, the team is um Thomas Burning Spears. Yeah. Uh, yes, and so he was a producer for him. Then you know, a Bunny Lee of a come in there, mm -hmm. uh, Striker Lee. Yeah. You know, uh, every tune it make it strike and beat, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he had a period like that. Yeah. So him and then yeah. And also, the Joe Gibbs, they are RLT, you know, mm -hmm. these man are good. Yeah. They do a lot of good work with Dennis Brown, mm -hmm. you know, presenting his, his thing to the world, really. And they had a good sound production so yeah. as well, you know. Yeah. Which Jai production is important to you? Well, all is important, you know, <laughs> because um, everyone is you know, part of our vibe, our time, and it's all, every vibe is important, you know, and how, how we present it and thing. Yeah, you know, the vibes come from just the vibe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. of musician, of situation, you know, of your mind thought at the time, so that creates the rhythm or the vibes of the rhythm. So it's all about the vibe, really, you know coming to from the inspiration of the most high. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us yes. about the most memorable root session. Well that have to be uh, in Nairobi yeah, nineteen eighty nine mm. in Africa yeah, Kenya. Yeah. Um I first trip into um Africa yeah. with the sound system because before we I used to travel there in the late 80s. We started yeah. that, you know, reconnection with the motherland. Yeah. So we did it 
Yeah, I went to Kenya and catch the vibe again, you know, and see it, but he said, well, but they wasn't playing reggae music there because of the slackness that was at the time being portrayed and the music coming out of Jamaica. So we got banned there. Kenya is a very conservative society, you know, and Africa on a whole, and they like, you know, clean things, you know. You know, like dirty living or, you know, <laughs> you're a bad thinking. Yeah. In that way. Let's just call it that. You know. <laughs> That's the far right. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, so we did it now. Um, we was there and we know the youth them have a love for Rastafari and the whole, you know, the liberty and the music around it. And it was, you know, coming to to us at the time. I was there with some other brethren who came from, um, yeah, they came from Holland mm. also. So we was there together prior to the, the trip with the song, you know. Mm. So they was asking us about different artists and they said, oh, you know this art, uh, you know, like I German Levi, when this beer, Gregory Isaacs, culture. There was uh, all those international artists that we knew mm. in London, but they knew them in Africa also. Mm. So, but they never get access to hearing a wider range of the music, you know? Yeah. So, that encouraged me to look into the possibility of bringing the song there. And then I said, yes, you can bring it in. And they had places mm -hmm. that we could play and stuff wow. like that. So we didn't really look for no sponsor once to help with us. Yeah, the strength and mm -hmm. the pounds necessary. I ship the sound and you know take a big house and the whole everybody with crew and mm -hmm. <laughs> at the time my young son, you know, mm -hmm. um, Tau, yeah, is like uh, you know seven, eight years old yeah. and he come with us and his mother and the whole thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so we we got on there initially for um, a two month thing and then end up that is over a year. We don't do you know? Wow. So, yeah. <laughs> you wow. understand that interacting with the Kenyans and the Maasai tribe and you know, really nice. getting entrenched in the Africa okay, right. yeah. Yes sir. So that was the first kind and then the first dance here in the city hall, you know. And yeah, that was a happening and to see the, the, the smiling faces. You know, which <laughs> you don't really see that here because our dance is black out. Yes. <laughs> you don't see no one till the dance done. And you see the light come on. You it's see true. Again. But down there, there's a light, in, you know, there's a bright light in the place and everybody could see everybody. And it was you know, the joy on their faces to hear the music and see, and uh, giving it to them. So that was, would be the first. Main dance, and there was many dances before that, but because this one was in the motherland, yeah, yeah that's another energy. Yeah. Yes, like. Could you please explain the difference between a dub and a special? Wow, well, a dub now is usually a, a version of a vocal rhythm, you know, and you would get the version where it's mixed by the engineer. Mm. With snippets of the vocal, can have that or it can just be the rhythm track that's being used. Mm. And then this dub now, as to say, a dub is the version of the vocal side, yeah? Mm. So you get this as, um, differently to the commercial version that was available outside for the general public. So we used to call that, that format is called a dub and it used to be cut on a dub plate, okay. you know? which is um, a black acetate, you know, um, oh, no. plate. Mm -hmm. No, it's like before you add um, these vinyl way of no, you used to have a thing called a dub plate, which is an uh, aluminium okay. um, base coated over with an acetate lacquer. Okay. Yeah, and then the music would be cut onto this plate. As a, as a tester, really, yeah. for um, to be played out, to the public and you could hear it and you know other say producers or labels 
they could play it for them and they could be interested and might get a deal. That's on the producer side of it. But for the sound man now, we used to get these plates yeah, and cut the music. If you had tapes or access with producers, you know, um, you'd get these plates to play. And this dub thing now was giving you an edge to say you had some music that <coughs> wasn't generally available outside for the public to buy but they could hear different mixes of popular okay. artists at the time you know yeah. across the board yeah. and according to which caliber of dub plate artist he was playing you know that would increase your popularity and, thing. and songs would meet to play and see who had the best selection for the night and this is where it start now where man looking to get a special with his naming yeah. His personalized version now, so it's like a dub of the dub. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> it's says personalized where you can, you alone can, you know, present that yeah. in the ring because it's personalized for you. So that is the special, special. You know? <laughs> but now it get commercialized more. So the specials are not really that special now. Yeah. You know, can anyone from them have the money? And them will get it. It's not like before. You had to have more than the money, the contact. Yeah. or even the vibe for the market to give you a different mix yeah. of his tune, you know, because it does get exploited whereby <coughs> if you have a, depending which artist it is, if he's popular at the time, mm. yeah, you can have that um, different mix of his popular track that is out there. Mm. But some man, them unscrupulous, you know, they will multiply, duplicate that plate and mm. sell it different places whereby it's only supposed to be you one supposed to have that. You know, yeah. and you give the producer the option if you want to sell it here and there. Yeah. You know? But man was doing these things which is abusing the position you know, as far as I see. Yeah. Who are your top five artists? Top five artists. Well we don't know where you're burning Yeah, here. yeah. Yeah. Then it's followed by Abbasinians, mm. you know, then Dennis Brown, mm. yeah, and uh, uh, Yabi Yu, mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Israel Vibration, mm. it's, you know, it's groups, uh, yeah, there's more, you know, like Mighty Diamond, mm. yeah, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. but yeah, there's, there's a few, but those are the top of the thing because of their consistency within consciousness and keep delivering the message on that level over the years, you know. And they're the ones that hook up the heart, really. When they come out, if they're doing performances, yeah, it's, it's another level of performance to the general artist there, but you see. Yeah. You know, those ones, they carry another energy as did like um, the body whalers of, of the world, you know? Yeah. And you know, the world um, whalers thing, yeah. they had another energy, but these man, them also had an energy, but they never get the spotlight like our whalers get, to be exposed internationally to the team, you know, you have to seek to find a lot of these yeah. artists. How did the Roots Ambassador get his name, Jayu? Okay, because um, at the same time, as I said, uh, when we went to Africa, you know, and we then moving around um, to different countries. Mm. So, we did that. When we get, I think it's uh, in Zimbabwe. Yeah, we was there with a group called Misty Roots from the UK. Mm. So, they was touring there at the time and this is within the year when we was in um, Kenya also so they stopped in Kenya checked us and then invite us down to Zimbabwe so I go down there you now and talk in talking with ones and things I said well I deal with roots you know yeah. this is like our office and things so the the um, Zimbabwean answered back, oh, so you're like an ambassador for the roots. I said, yeah, yeah, so you're a roots ambassador. So you see, that's where that yeah, just okay. stayed, you know. So it just, you know, that's my office, the roots. Yeah. And, you know, ambassador is carrying a message from his sovereign, yeah. uh, which is, you know, King Rastafari, I said, I said, in my case, you understand? Mm. So that's why I deliver that within our music and the whole thing is general, you know, structured around and to deliver consciousness but in a Rastafari way. Yeah.
Yeah. With that message on the line. You know. Right yeah. through, you know, without dilution. Yeah. <laughs> How is Roots music important to reggae? <clears throat> well, we give it the soul, you know, and it's, that is the magnet. Mm. Yeah. No one's rock also, but this is this is a magnet, you know, it's spirituality. You know, and it's telling you do right, live good, and it also highlights injustices, mm. as I was saying in the beginning, you know. Injustices in the, in the earth generally, mm. and what we face as black people growing up in this western hemisphere, you know. Mm. As we have to replant ourselves here, we are re rooted out from mm. an island now, brought here, yeah. So, so the roots part now, the music is the strength, you know, and that's what really draw people to it, kind of as the mysticism, you know. The rest of it, you know. You know, I love you, you love me, or you gone and left me and it's <laughs> my heart. That is general, you know. Yeah. But the mysticism and the vibe yeah. is within the roots. Mm -hmm. It's not there in that other set of the music, you know. Yeah, that's why the thing kinda of slow down in the sense of um you know, the music uh, the forces there is they would rather hear, I love you, baby, and you broke my heart and think more than stand up for your right, man. Mm -hmm. Don't want let the wicked man trample you, you know. Mm -hmm. Remember, he's a black man. Mm -hmm. Remember, he's a godly man. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. he's, they, don't, yeah, they don't want you to, you know, you know enhance that thinking. Yeah. So within it, the music is pushing that thinking. So they don't, you know, they would divert it wherever possible. And this is the fight we were fierce with. Presenting the roots music, you know. Yes, sir. What is the biggest struggle for sound system owners? Um, I will say venues, access to venues, so that we can keep this vibe, you know, going from place to place. And right now in London, the venue is gone. You know, they're very limited, and then unless you are um, a wealthy man can book some big venue, you know, or be in touch with some big promoters, then you can get to play. But generally, it's very hard because of lack of venues. Mm -hmm. so this is the biggest battle, you yeah. know. And then another thing is, as I say, accessing to get, you know, to get music. It's, it's, it's not a battle, but it's part of it, you know. Mm. To get fresh music to present, yeah, these <laughs> two parts. But the main thing is places to play. Mm. Yeah. I don't really see it as being a number one. You know, mm. number one is just for the moment because there's always somebody else coming for the number one. Mm. But I just want to be, you know, class as yeah, consistently good from mm. that time till now. Yeah, you know, consistently good. Are like in the sense of using like the car world for energy like it's like um did I say it's a road rose rice. Yeah. You know there's enough car out there but rose rice just yeah. have a standard. So yeah. you just see me that as a road rice so mm -hmm. just you know good consistent mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Yeah definitely. Yes I like that another day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone can relate to that one. <laughs> you know what I'm just saying. Why is Jayit sound popular with rich reggae followers? Well, I don't know, kind of, I would say, because you'd have to ask the crowd. <laughs> you know, in that way, why they like, why they come, you know. But I, I think it's because the message there is a good message. And it's a message a lot of ones. <laughs> can gravitate to and mm -hmm. love. Mm -hmm. So anyway they get to and they like how we you know present it. Mm -hmm. You know, cause as was one said a long time ago, you know, musical priest and you know, the sound tower is your altar. Mm -hmm. Then there's the aggregation. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're giving them mm -hmm. you know, the service. And they like the roots and bass in their service. Mm -hmm. So that is why they've been coming from 75 till now. Right. <laughs> and because you're dedicated. Yes, yes sir. Otherwise you wouldn't yes. be here from 75. It's true, there's a certain drive, but you know, it's a 
continuous thing because it's my life. You know, yeah. understand? So it's yeah, it's easy for me to do because it's my life and it's it comes great. natural. Yes, yes, sir. <laughs> That's it. Tell us about your awards and achievements. Well, award. I don't want to know about award. My award, I would say, is the, the people there. Mm. You know, where um, say, hey man, go on youth. Or, yeah, we love all your play that you there. You know, that is oh, my award. Constantly coming, yeah. that's an award. Yes, or, <laughs> boy, I was feeling rough. Or, you know, oh, boy, I had a terrible week or what, and I come to the dance and you play this or you play that, and lift me out of that moment into a higher oh. you know. Those is my award, yeah. mm. poor and physical, you know, get a cup for this, yeah. or get a cup for yeah. that. And, you know, most time, even within this awards business, it's politics. Mm. It's who can get the most to come and for come shout, Yo! Yo, free man, see there, and, oh, don't worry, this is that one. No, you know, mm. <laughs> this is not, not it, it's the people, and, you know, they are what? Yeah. yeah. There's always politics, man. How can people contact you? Well, at one time, you know, you used to be telephone and care. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you see me in the dance, you give me a talk. You yeah. talk to a man and it feels as true. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, these times now, we have media, yeah. as they say, so media management, which I like, is just getting to, not just getting to, but getting to um, put it together mm -hmm. in that way. Okay. You know? So, the usual things with the, the gram, the Instagram and yeah. you know, Facebook. Facebooks and yeah. Facebooks and yeah, emails. Yeah. 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 And again generally in the dance, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes. What sounds have you enjoyed playing alongside? You're smiling though. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, most time is entertaining, you know, it's all, all good in that yeah. way. Yeah, so most of them really, you know, you know like, uh, even back when we were starting out, cause the first song we played with was a song called Sofra mm. in that out there. Yeah, we was playing with some song local song in the area, youth man deals and thing, but the song like when we were out of around London at that time and yeah it was Sofra was a baptism as them say of fire but then yeah, the baptism of everything you know mm -hmm. so we go into that and how do you sound that yeah it was enjoyable because they was they was good you know it was good and they made you better you know so that also helped strengthen me and then after that you know there was the Joshua cars and Fat Man and you know, Quaker City from Birmingham, these are songs in the 70s and things that some still going now, like Shaka and Fat Man, you know, come back up again and think and those you know, the Miss Foundation songs like I said, for some start before, mm -hmm. a long time before, you know. But um we all come up together, but playing dances with them was nice and yeah, good vibes and crowd and it was repeated. Because you always know if a dance is good, because promoters want to put it on yeah. the same two songs on the bill, yeah. you know, and things like that. And the people then come and, yeah, everybody, you know, get to enjoy it. Promoter making money and, yeah, yeah he's happy. So, kind of people come in, the people then get good enjoyment, because they a good level of dog yeah. plates and, you know, mm -hmm. for the night. So, mm -hmm. yeah, entertainment, you know. Mm -hmm. Why yeah. should the younger generation listen to Roots Reggae? Yeah, because I keep them on the road. You know, to righteousness mm. and keep your conscious and sharp. You know, there, there's no other music that enlighten you, like Roots music. Mm. You know, and keep you straight. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's why the youth have to listen to it. And because they have, you know, kind of suppressed it. Mm. And they're not hearing it so much and they get you know, pull to other genres of the music. We have little consciousness in it because it's telling of the reality of the street. Mm -hmm. You know, like the, the storms, the music, them, and, mm -hmm. you know, those whole new wave of 
what the youth is listening to, but a fragment, the actual core that listen to the roots. Mm -hmm. So they have to tune in and balance the thing and <laughs> tune back to the roots. You know? mm -hmm. That's why there's a lot of tune to say, get back to your roots. Mm -hmm. you know? This is one of the reasons why. Because mm -hmm. youth then is like going rudderless, you know. Mm -hmm. They're just going on the ocean, but they're not on no the steerings. Yeah. <laughs> so, no yeah. direction. No direction. That's mm. yes. Please give advice to aspiring roots reggae sounds. Well, I always try to keep to your conviction, you know, and how you say, try to better, you know, your selection all the time in the sense of refreshing. You know, and trying to seek out or helping to expose artists mm -hmm. to the wider media, let the public hear them, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one of the things I and I saw is that we don't just play the normal established artists, we play artists that, you know, tomorrow they will be, we see, well, we feel, because there's a feeling, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that the other man is sound good, that sister sound good. Just like, you know, that rhythm song good, that, yeah, it's a thing. Yeah, we, it's like, I can't say, mm. oh, it goes, just if you give it to you by the father, and you can just mm. spot a thing, you know, so mm. spot a talent, I know that rhythm, you know, man. I hear an artist, and yeah, you're gonna chase, like, I would have seen, yeah, there's some artists, them, you hear them before they get really popular, and you know, they sound strong. Like um, the black heroes, mm -hmm. those years are uh, like you that say, who are you? You that come like that was Congo in the recent uh, mm -hmm. year, those artists, and yeah, okay. And then you have some on the UK side here as well, you know, like the Dub Judas, mm -hmm. and the same Jerry Lyons, you know, yeah. and G Vibes. And so we expose both Jamaican and African and Everyone, mm. we've had which part they're coming from, from the on the righteous truck and his roots, they have our ears and we listen, you know, and if it mm. can be presented in a, in a musical service, we'll do that, we'll do that mm. you know. Yeah. So this is it, you know, and yeah, there's some, yeah, like in Africa right now, there's an abundance of talent mm. waiting to be. Like, you know, like in a pipe just to open mm -hmm. and leash on the earth, you know. Mm -hmm. So, that's what I know is right now, with that as well. So, you know, watch that space. Yeah. So, I'm coming from the motherland, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so. Please feel free to give a respect to the Jayute family and friends. Yes. <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> yeah. I know, give thanks, you know. Mm. That way is here and if you support over the years and you know, for that mention of enough ones still. So I would just say the family, you yeah. know, and the ones that know I yeah, from that time until now, you know. Yeah, give thanks for the support. It is what it you know. Mm. Yes, yeah. Speed up fire station, keep up the works positively. Yeah man, more strength and life, my friend. To you and your production crew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry, man. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> Just, uh, part one. Two yeah. shall be done. And we shall run some music <laughs> and things. See? Yeah. That's the fire and the prayer. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Yeah. As we follow your music in your honor. Watch it. Oh, 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 oh,